Dr. Jason Miller here with a video to lead off a series on coaching, uh, my experiences. And I start with the Dr. Jason Miller thing to um, not win points or I think I'm cool. I have a PhD in exercise physiology. All that means is that I've spent some time reading research literature and did a little bit of research on my own to understand the research process and, and learn how to generate research, how to think on your own, how to find information on your own. That's what a formative education, at least it used to be. Um, it's teaching you, criti teaching you critical thinking skills and where to find the data that you need in order to be a better practitioner. Now, as a coach, uh, I grew up in the 90s as a coach, and the NSCA, National Training Conditioning Association, was big into the bridging gap, the bridging the gap type of um, attitude. So, you know, the model I saw as a really good coach was being in the science and then being in the coaching world. So we had the science and the art of coaching um, and going back and forth between the two. Now, most people define science, they use science as this noun, right? Science is, um, to me, more of a verb. And so you do science, you have a, a hypothesis and you test it. It's a, you know, if we look at an anatomy book, that's a pile of hypotheses and or observations, which is, this, you know, your supporting hypothesis, or you just made a bunch of observations about a bunch of cadavers. And so you found out, you know, by looking at 58 different cadavers, that this is what the liver in general looks like. And this is the general structures of, uh, of the liver. And this is the histology of the liver and so on and so forth. And so we generate then a textbook on anatomy. You know, the, when it comes to training literature, this is more difficult because we don't have 58 training studies necessarily of 58 different people. We have one or two studies, maybe in a, a emerging area, or if we have a training study, how many training studies is it going to take in order for us to really support all the different individual variations that may occur in our experience? So, for example, if we have novice trainers, advanced trainers, males, females, uh, you know, people who have uh, mobility issues with their hips, people who don't, people who are hypermobile, people who are hyper stiff. I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on. There's just a litany of different variations that can occur in human beings. And so when you read tr research literature in the field of exercise and sports science and strength conditioning, you have to be highly skilled and be highly uh, attuned to that research and apply critical thinking skills. Again, that's what higher education used to be about, and I think it sometimes still is, is about using critical thinking skills. And so you read this research literature, and if you, you know, as an undergrad, you just get the information so you can read the literature, and as a master's student, you should be able to generate your own quick study, uh, but also it teaches you how to read that literature a little bit better, and then as a doctoral student, you read even more research literature, and you start producing more research in a research line that may be in a vein of interest that you have. And so that's kind of how things to typically used to work in higher education. Um, and I encourage you, you know, those of you that are either in higher education, have been in higher education, or going into higher education, you know, take that approach to your learning as, as a critical thinking practice. Uh, you're building an understanding of anatomy and physiology and those things, but you're also building a, your, your skepticism a little bit of this information, and that's okay. It's okay to question information. That's where we can stay out of trouble in nutrition and exercise sports science literature and an application. You know, um, we've all seen or experienced people that take one study and apply it as, as, you know, this is the gold standard now, this one study. But that one study could have been analyzed using faulty statistics. It could have been done with a lot of error. Uh, you know, you take a training study that's 12 weeks long. How much confounding variable, or how much confounding uh, inputs could there be for that study, you know, dietary, uh, psychophysiological, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, and that's not to knock research literature. What that is saying is, because uh, research is very hard, I have a lot of respect for researchers. I do a little bit of research. I'm not a prolific researcher. It's not what I like to do with my doctorate, but it is difficult. Um, and so that's a, not, a knock on the literature. The, not, the knock is on us as readers of the literature in order to decipher that information, put it in its place, Line it with other research literature we've seen, and over time, hopefully, we start to see a picture emerge. And if there's a lot of contraindications that are occurring, like in the let's say the flexibility literature, one of the things you can start with is who were the people that were studied, right? So that's just one, you know, um, that's another topic for a video. But the, the important thing is if we're going to talk about science, you have to know how to properly, um, you know, manage the science. Even a book is drawing upon science. It's drawing upon a bunch of scientific, uh, it's a secondary source. So it's drawing on the primary sources, all these, this literature that's been accumulated on this, on this topic or the individual. I wrote a book a few years ago, don't try to find it, don't read it because it needs updated. 
Um, but all the information that this person is, is, or persons have collected over time, whether that is from science, the research literature, or from their observations has been accumulated into this textbook. And so you have to have to read that with critical thinking skills. We shouldn't just read things without you know, being skeptical of them. It also means we can you know, play around applying them, but we need to be skeptical. On the other side, as a coach, you know, if you have a lot of floor experience, though, you need to go to the research literature. And so, you know, to help confirm things you're seeing or refute things you're seeing, you know, and that two-way street is really nice when you can get it going. Uh, and so I've spent, you know, the last 20 years coaching along with doing, um, you know, the formal education that comes and, and all the reading and all the, you know, have research literature here on my desk right now, right? That is, is always and forever. Um, and it's fun. I enjoy reading. I enjoy learning. But I enjoy that, that back and forth. I take something into the weight room and try it. Um, based on empirical evidence, I might try it on myself first too, and it doesn't work. Okay, well, why didn't it work? It worked in the study. Well, there could be a myriad of reasons why. Or I'm seeing something in the, the you know, my coaching experience that I can go back and confirm in the research literature or say, you know, I don't know if this research literature line is really accurate, or I don't know if that understanding of physics is really an accurate way to represent, you know, what's going on with some of the increases in strength. Maybe it's not the variable we think it is. And so that is to me, a good coach in any realm, but specifically talking about strength conditioning and barbell sports, is it's back and forth between the two, the science and the coaching. And there could be seminars in there that people respect. And even then you run through your filter and you're always thinking about what they're saying and you're not just randomly applying things without, you, know, you may apply bits and pieces of what they say. Um, you don't have to be this person that's in this dogma of like, this is the only way you think, this is the only way that you're gonna train people. Um, that is a very dangerous place to be because if there's anything I've learned over the years and I'll, you know, these, these will be videos in the series here, is people are different. Uh, that's may not seem like a shocker, but we forget that sometimes when we are training people, they're different in so many ways, physiologically, psychologically, their anatomy, you know, that, that may sound weird. Like, well, they have two arms and two legs. Yeah. But how long are those arms and legs compared to their torso? Right. That's a different anatomy. Uh, and so, you know, appreciating those differences and when you apply your coaching, is critical for being a successful coach. So again, this is just a, a, a video to get started in the series I'm gonna release. I'm excited about talking about my experiences and, and you can you know, say that's bogus or I don't agree with you at all and that's great. That's, I, that's part of good dialogue and critical thinking skills when it comes to um, developing better professionals and that's what we're really interested in doing. I'm interested in doing that. I don't have it all figured out and I'm close and I will readily admit that I am humbled all the time by coaches far more uh, you know, into the literature or far more into the experience or both in particular all the time. Um, realizing I've done things that could have been done better or I've maybe thought outside the box a little bit in some areas, but um, most of the time it's being humbled. Um, and so be humbled, be movable. Don't be, don't get into a dogma. Don't be, I follow this person or that person. That's a dangerous place to be. Don't apply laws, which would be another talk. There's not a lot of laws when it comes to training. I'm talking about laws of science. Right. There's the law of gravity, but that's, you know, that's a foundational law to weight training on the planet. But there isn't a lot of laws like on periodization, if you even believe in periodization or on chain training or on, you know, all, there's not a lot of laws that are directly related to how these training methods are, are applied. OK, so to keep that in mind and you, you know, stay out of the mire a little bit, um, you know, and stay out of the weeds. And when it comes to you know, fall into this trap of, you know, getting into this dogma and not being able to get out of it and being movable and not adapting to being a good strength coach.